I think you're amazing. You are too, Henry. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, Perry, you are awesome. <laughs> thank you, and I appreciate you what you're doing too, buddy. Well, thank you. Because if you allow the world to define you, if you allow friends to define you, if you allow your spouse to define you or anybody to define you outside of how God sees you, that does open the door to rejection. God bless you. I, and I hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank you, Brother Thank Henry. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you too. Thank you for having us. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. I'm so excited today because we have Dr. Bobby Jones with us today. Uh, today I have the highly and distinct honor of introducing a man that has impacted not only my life, but the world. Uh, he is a trailblazer. Uh, he had the longest running uh, gospel uh, TV show, as many of us have known and I've watched growing up, the Bobby uh, Jones gospel show. He's introduced uh, us to many great names and gospel recording artists uh, and exposed us to such names as uh, Kurt Franklin, Mary Mary, Yolanda Adams, and the list goes on and on. Uh, but these are only just a few that stretches the surface. And, uh, and many of these people today have great careers who have come under the umbrella of Dr. Bobby Jones, who's such an honorable man. Dr. Bobby Jones, it's an honor to have you on the show today, and thank you for blessing us with your presence today. Well, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your upbringing? Uh, what was that like? Well, I came from a very small town in the state of Tennessee. It was called Henry. And I guess maybe about 600 people lived there. I'm not quite sure. Uh, finished uh, elementary school there, of course. There were uh, eight grades in one room. <laughs> eight, <laughs> eight grades in one room and, wow. one school, and one school teacher. So, uh, of course, we lived there. We had to go to another town that was a little bigger than Henry called Paris, Paris, Tennessee. And that's where I went to high school in Paris, Tennessee, and finished there when I was 15. And uh, I left uh, Paris and went to Nashville, uh, to Tennessee State University when I was 15 and finished when I was 19. That's a little bit of the background for my educational experiences. So uh, I had very few experiences with gospel music during that period because we were from a Methodist church and uh, they didn't approve of gospel music during that time. Now, we're looking way back to 1938. That's 84 years ago. So, you see, that's a long time. Yeah. So that's that's a kind of like the educational part of it. And the musical part only came because I was just kind of uh, messing around with my aunt's piano. Mm -hmm. uh, when I moved to Nashville, I, uh, I moved to my aunt's and uncle's house. And she had an upright piano. And she could play by ear. And so I taught, I taught myself how to play a little bit on the piano. Then they hired me at a church here. I was a freshman in college, man, and they hired me, and which was a, a, an amazing thing to me, and my, especially my mother. She said, you're playing the piano? <laughs> you never played the piano? I said, I know. I said, but they did. And so that set me up for, for doing what I did. After I started playing the piano and got hired to that church, I began to develop choirs in that same church, which was an amazing feat for me, too, because I didn't know gospel music. I had to learn it, you know. So that gives you some background. You can ask me more now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, uh, when uh, when did you uh, launch your television program? Uh, and when you did, could you have ever imagined that it would impact so many people when you first started out? No and no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never started out to think that I was going to do anything other than a little show here in Nashville that that uh, I enjoyed being. And then uh, I, I, I didn't I didn't expect any of this because it wasn't my background, you know. And uh, God was, you know, it was all God's doing. That's what He intended for me to do, and the way He did it was amazing to me. I'd say, but uh, that's. That's where it started, and no, I did not expect any of these <laughs> things that you called off, but I appreciate it. Thank you. 
um, I know there are many people in your life that um, that you are inspired by. Uh, I did watch an interview of you recently uh, where you said that Dr. Maya Angelou, y'all were best friends. Oh, yeah. Uh, I happened to interview her in 2014, shortly before she passed away. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I did. It was the greatest honor of my life. I love her voice. Yeah. yeah. I so I just want to ask you that question. Who in your life um, that has inspired you uh, as far as like growing up and whatnot? Well, or, you know, or, or even the later part of your life? Well, there, there were a lot of people who plays roles in all of our lives, you know, and some outstanding than others. And uh, uh, I had many people to, uh, I guess, help me get where I, I am. And Dr. Maya Angelou was one of them. I appreciated her so much. Then I had an opportunity to meet some politicians here and there, like Jesse Jackson and Al, Al Sharpton. And, and guess who the other one was? You never would, so I'm just going to tell you right off my head who exactly who it was. But he was an inspiration for me. And that, the name is Louis Farrakhan. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like Louis Farrakhan. Yeah, well, yeah. I like him. He called and asked if he could do my show. My show was uh, uh, on BET by that time. And uh, he saw it, and he wanted to come and do my gospel show because I'm the only one who had a black show you know, at that time doing gospel music. So I told him yes, and uh, he came, and we became friends and still to this day. That's good. Well, um, I named you about four people, I think. Oh, yeah, you did. And <laughs> I, I appreciate that. You know, the gospel industry, you know, with you growing up and whatnot, um, where do you see the gospel industry going in the future? It seems like it's evolved. Has it evolved? Is it changing? Is it the well, same? Just, yeah, it's just like life. You know, look at look at how old you are now than when you first started. Look how old I was then, and look how old I am now. So if we never made a change, if we never made a move, something would be wrong. You know, mm -hmm. it's just do that because new ideas, new people, new suggestions, new everything, a new you. You know, I was I was once not saved, now I am, and so are you. So I, I'm thinking that it's going to continue that path. Uh, only God knows where it's going to go. And many of us who are traditionalists in a sense of used to you, being used to older gospel music and singers, and now the younger ones uh, are taking that place and, and they're going with it. They, they are getting it spread more across the world, I should say, in movies, in plays, and recordings, in public appearances, you know, all these things. Many of them were not happening during my day, but look at it today. And uh, two of the people that have really stepped out, uh, not on their own doing, but by the spirit of God was, uh, and and they, now they, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the, the leader of, of the presentation of gospel music is Kirk Franklin. Mm -hmm. And he tells the story, would be no Kirk Franklin if it wasn't for Mike Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. that's true. You've helped uh, so many people. I got a couple more questions. Uh, what would be a word of encouragement you can give to an upcoming brand new gospel artist uh, that's trying to get their feet off the ground? What What would you say to an upcoming gospel artist? Well, anytime anybody starts out to try to do something that they think would be a compliment to their lives, they need to know as much about that to keep it as you know as they can, which means you need to apply yourself around people who do that. Then you have to study it along with this as long as that. Be sincere, you know, you gotta you gotta be sincere with it. And then you have to uh study and make yourself improve as the as the Bible said. And and be real with yourself. If if you're going to say you're doing this for Christ, then do it. If not, then you're in the wrong place. So my advice to them is always know what you're getting into when you're starting. This is not a joke. This is a, when you do gospel songs or any religious presentations, you have to concentrate on what you're doing so you can become. Everybody won't become at the same level. You know, there, there's only one Kirk Franklin, one Yolanda Adams, one whomever, but there will be others and they will be taking their place in life. Yeah, they're in their 50s and 60s now, you know. So somebody's going to come right behind them 
and do things probably even greater. So as that old song said, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to become of us? Yeah, and my last question, Dr. Jones, I would like to ask, uh, you've created such a beautiful uh, legacy with gospel music. Um, as it relates to your legacy, how would you like to be remembered? You know, uh, it's hard for me, uh, Henry, in a way to say that I, I have a legacy status because, uh, you, you, you know, I can't get myself into that. But people say that, and I have all oh, come. Man, I got so many awards. You should see my house. It looks <laughs> like a museum. <laughs> so I, I would really like to know there is truth in my soul. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the main thing. Uh, I would not to be someone that I'm not, you know. Uh, know that I love Christ and I love people and I follow his rules and regulations. And that's what I want them to realize that I am for real. I'm a country boy that kept those concepts of country people, which means raw and and, <laughs> and unlearned by a lot of sources, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, Bobby Jones is just a guy that, that loves the Lord, loves people and, and love education and all the other factors that go to make someone who's in in the public eye. Yeah, I appreciate you. And I also appreciate your humility, uh, your kindness, and uh, everything about you. Uh, I really appreciate you for being a trailblazer to so many people. And I and it's a huge honor for me today to be able to have, have you. Ever met, have you ever met me? I've Person never met I've never met you personally. Uh, this you never been, you've never been in my company? Uh, no, I've never been in your company. Um, I've watched I've watched you as an outsider, like I've watched your TV show, and I've supported uh -huh. I've supported uh -huh. in that way, but I've never been in your company or anything like that. Oh man, you missed it! <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> I would have loved it. I would have loved been a part of it, but um, I'm far more humorous than people would think, you yeah. know, <laughs> because I come off kind of stoic, you know, an educator. You know, I have three doctorate degrees. I have to express some of that, and a lot of people think of that, but I am just as regular as you want to see, <laughs> <laughs> and will never change. You know, I, I can't. Appreciate I can't. I'm too old, man. <laughs> I appreciate that about you. And you look great for your age. If you don't mind uh, letting our audience know uh, how old you are. Oh, you already know, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> you won't get it wrong. What? Tell me. Tell me. 86. No, you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did that intentionally. I think you did that. <laughs> yeah, it's close, though. I'm 84. <laughs> OK. OK. Awesome. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 36. Oh, you're such a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Almost three three decades older than you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You have a great day. All right. You as well. <laughs> well, uh, Perry, you are awesome. <laughs> Thank you, and I appreciate you what you're doing too, buddy. Well, thank you. Because if you allow the world to define you, if you allow friends to define you, if you allow your spouse to define you or anybody to define you outside of how God sees you, that does open the door to rejection. God bless you. I, I hope y'all have an amazing day. Thank you, Brother Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.